Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to be having a look at symbolism as a literary device. We're going to be exploring what symbolism is, at some simple examples of symbolism, and then having a look at some more complex ones. What is symbolism? Symbolism is when an object represents something else. So usually a simple object will represent an abstract idea or concept. We'll show some examples in a moment. It's used to really add deeper meaning and depth to characters, to plot, to setting, and really adds a fantastic layer when you're reading a text. It does require some good inference skills to be able to discover these in texts. Symbolism exists everywhere in the real world if you know how to look for it. Some simple examples of it are stop signs or traffic lights. These tell us in cars that we need to stop. You're probably using symbolism a lot when you're messaging friends. When you send a smiley face, it means that you're happy. When you send a frowned face, it means that you're, you're sad or upset. Symbolism similarly also exists in written text, so plays and books, and also in visual text like movies and TV shows. A really common example of symbolism is the use of a white dove. A white dove is often used to symbolise peace. A nice example of symbolism is the use of the phoenix in Harry Potter. Now, a phoenix is a mythological creature, bursts into flames and then is reborn from its own ashes. So what this bird symbolises is it symbolises rebirth. It symbolises that whilst things end, other things begin. And it's a really beautiful way of representing the cycle of life or good versus evil and instilling hope in people. And this is exactly what Forks the Phoenix symbolises in the Harry Potter series. Okay, in the next part of the video, I'm going to be reading out a short extract from a text. And at the end, I'm going to ask you what you think either the storm or the necklace symbolises in this passage. Remember that as I'm reading this aloud, really stop to think what could the storm mean and what could the necklace mean more than the actual objects that they are. Okay. As Ivy peered out her bedroom window, she saw the storm approaching. Deep, threatening clouds slowly crept towards Melbourne. That'd be right, Ivy grumbled. Perfect weather for the first day of high school. One last time, Ivy nervously checked herself in the mirror. Hair perfect? Check. Uniform perfectly ironed? Check. Makeup exceptional? Check. Jewelry? Shit! Ivy had forgotten jewelry. How could she go to school looking like this? She was a teenager now and wanted desperately to look the part. The older students would surely judge her for forgetting such a thing. Ivy quickly grasped at the necklace Annabelle gave her last month. Ivy! Her mum screeched. We're going to be late if you don't hurry. As Ivy hurried down the stairs, the ne necklace slipped from her grasp and shattered into pieces on the floor. All right, what do you think the storm or the necklace could symbolise in this passage? When I wrote this, I was thinking that the storm approaching could symbolise something that's about to happen. It's foreshadowing that something negative in her life is about to happen. And the necklace shattering could symbolise the friendship that Ivy has with her friend Annabelle. And perhaps they will no longer be friends in this new school environment. So symbolism exists everywhere, particularly within literary texts. How we pick up on it is that we need to infer. So this means stopping, slowing our reading down and thinking about what an object might symbolise or represent. Keep in mind that symbols can be interpreted differently depending on your background, depending on your own ideas and no two people ever read the same text and that's really the power of symbolism is that we all read and think different things. So I'm going to read a short excerpt from the text of Mice and Men. But to give you some background, the passage that I'm going to read is from the final chapter. In one of the first chapters, or actually in the first chapter, the novelist John Steinbeck mentions a water snake that glides through a pool with a periscope head. And it's just in the first chapter, it's just really cruising by. To help give you some context, the novel of Mice and Men follows two characters, George and Lenny, and their friendship. So, let's have a look at the passage. A water snake glided smoothly up the pool, twisting its periscope head from side to side, and it swam the length of the pool and came to the legs of a motionless heron that stood in the shallows, 
A silent head and beak lanced down and plucked it out by the head and the beak and swallowed the little snake while its tail waved frantically. Okay, so in this passage, we have the water snake that was originally cruising down the river being eaten by the heron. So whether you've read the novel or whether you haven't, take a moment and think about what could this water snake and the bird represent. Okay, so the most common interpretation of this symbol is that the water snake actually symbolizes the friendship of the two men, which is about to come to an end. Remember that there can be lots of different interpretations of symbolism. The most important thing is to give it a shot and to try and work out what an author could be doing, in particular if they've included an object or they've placed a lot of emphasis on an animal or an object. Stop and think what could that object symbolize or represent. Good luck.